So hey. today I want to share a statistic that um, that changes everything. So that that's my lead in. That's that's my teaser. That sounds amazing, Andy. Um, before you get going, I just wanted to say we're so grateful to have you here with us um, for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom, um, especially from Mexico, where you guys are away from home. We really are super grateful. Um, and I didn't mention last month, for those of you that, that may not know, um, Andy and Natalie created Share Success um, and helped put to create the amazing guides that we have today as part of Empowered Success um, with Joe Chara. So, I've been using them for many years. They're so awesome and amazing and so grateful for all of um, the support that you guys give us and the, the amazing knowledge that you share. So really looking forward to what you're going to share with us today, Andy. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Tanya. And thank, thank each of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to, to come and to learn and, and just always be improving. Um, that's one of the things we love most about this business is the chance to um, invest in yourself, to always be growing your, your knowledge, be uh, stretching yourself outside of your comfort zone and just becoming more of who you're meant to be. So thank you all for, for choosing that and, and investing today. So I wanna start out with a couple of questions. Um, do you have in your market um, two main account types, um, the, the customer account type and the wellness advocate account type? I see one nod. Yes, okay, seeing a couple thumbs up. Okay, so um, I wanna share with you, um, Natalie and I were invited to come in and meet with um, some vice presidents at doTERRA um, last week before we left and, um, and they shared a statistic with us that, um, honestly, it, uh, it took my breath away, um, and, and explained so much to me about what actually moves the needle in our doTERRA business. Um, you know, Natalie and I like to think that we're pretty smart and we, we have all these, uh, you know, the best practices on, on how to build a business. But um, this, this one statistic blew my mind. So um, in all of the years in doTERRA, uh, so, I mean, throughout, throughout all of doTERRA, we, we've always had a, a huge base of customers, right? 85% is the global average of, of customers to builders or even sharers. So 85% have never enrolled a single person and they, they buy the products because the value is there. So um, from 2008 till 2015, guess what the statistic was um, for the number of customers who started sharing, who, who actually, um, you know, opened their mouths, uh, gave their neighbor an oil experience, shared with a family member, shared with a friend. Uh, do you guys want to take a guess? So the statistic is it was one in five. So one in five um, converted from user to sharer. Well, um, guess what the statistic is um, now ever since 2015? The statistic now is one in 19. So we went from about 20% to about 5% of users who convert to sharers. So what I didn't real, what, what I failed to realize is that the, um, the bulk of new enrollments in doTERRA comes from casual sharers. You know, we always recognize the, the big enrollers 
Um, there's always special prizes and enrollments and more, you know, more before um, two years ago, uh, but, but since the beginning of doTERRA, people have always put on stage those who, who enroll in massive numbers. But the fact is, those are not the heroes that have built the, the bulk of the doTERRA business as we know it today. The bulk of enrollments come from people who love the product and just kind of accidentally start um, sharing and inspiring others to set up their own account. So who knows what happened in 2015 when all of that changed. So when I was at corporate, I, th I thought it was the um, FDA um, letter that we got and, and the FTC um, stuff that went down about the same time. So, so what I found out though, is that there was another huge shift that happened um, in 2015. And that was the new account type. So before then, doTERRA, um, I think 95% of everybody who joined, joined as what was then called an IPC. It was a wellness advocate, right? It was somebody who had the ability to earn commissions. And, and so <clears throat> because of the FDA thing, we, we decided, oh, we need to have um, more like dedicated customers, like people who legitimately just buy the product that they don't even have the possibility of earning commissions. And so we set up a new account type. Well, the, the byproduct of that choice was that people who used to accidentally earn a commission, you know, just from casual sharing and um, uh, accidental sharing um, disappeared overnight. Um, anybody who, who shared back then, or, or you know, they, they would get a check within the next week with a small little fast start bonus. And all of a sudden they would perk up and they would say, oh my gosh. And, and so now what we have is if you just have a customer account type, if you share doTERRA and somebody says, how do you buy? You probably just say, oh, I don't know, just go, just go hop online. And now those people might buy from Amazon or, or some other vendor. So um, the people who, who got that check, a lot of them, it really got their attention. And so now we have people who um, were casual sharers and, and moved into builders because there was a reward, there was an incentive. So, um, so here's the good news. Is, is anybody else having like a huge aha hearing these statistics? Like to me, I was, my jaw was on the ground because the, um, the simplicity of what we need to, to break through the next level is right there in front of us. It's so simple and so plain. And it's, it's not a huge shift in what we need to do. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Knowing these statistics, <clears throat> what could we do differently in doTERRA? I've talked to some people and they're like, well, let's just ask doTERRA to get rid of the, the customer account type. That's, that's one option, but I have, have good news for you. Do we need that to happen? No, because we're the people who tend to influence uh, behavior <clears throat> on our teams. We, we set the culture, we define the, the best practices as they happen. So the good news is, um, all we need to do is, is redirect people to join as wellness advocates. Even if they, their only interest is uh, to use the product, if, if we do that one simple thing, 
I believe it's going to make the biggest difference in the, the whole trajectory of our markets. Because think about it. If, if you had a pool of a thousand people coming into your team every month and one in five of those <clears throat> is uh, sharing, you know, how many is that? That's 200 people, okay? Now take that same thousand people and you change the statistic to one in 19. And now how many is that? It's one in, it's 45 out of that thousand. And so you repeat that month over month over month. And now there's, uh, instead of compound interest, it's, it's compound shrinkage. And so the pool of potential users is now shrinking. And so, you know, the first month it's, it's a thousand new people. The next month it's, you know, uh, 955. The next month it's 915. So that pool just keeps shrinking and shrinking because less people are sharing. We have fewer of, of these accidental sharers. And so that's, that, that's exactly what uh, Drew Wolfert showed us with um, a few slides uh, when we came into the office last week is he showed how ever since 2015, there's just been this very gradual uh, plateauing and even shrinkage in some teams. Um, and this is, their, this is why they believe um, it's all happened. So um, it, it's hard for me to over um, emphasize the, the power of accidental commissions. Um, who knew that that was making such a huge impact in all of our businesses? But as it turns out, that's, that's the biggest change that's happened ever since 2015, which is when doTERRA has started to plateau. So um, that's really, really good news. Uh, the good news is we don't have to become massive enrollers. The good news is we don't have to find like huge, huge builders, you know, and bringing them over from other companies. Although all those things will happen eventually. But the good news is <clears throat> by changing that simple little behavior, when somebody says, oh, I just wanna buy the products, you say, great, this is still the best account type. It's called Wellness Advocate and, you know, explain it however you want. But that's the simplest hack that I found to date that will make the biggest difference. So um, <clears throat> the good news is it, th there's nothing illegal about it. There's nothing hard about it. Um, it's, it's probably the, the most leveraged change that each of us can make to grow our doTERRA businesses. So, um, and, and I hear you, Carol, most of us are not enrolling a thousand. Um, I was just using that as an example, like let's say, let's say you've got a, a blue diamond team or a presidential diamond team and your whole team is bringing in a thousand people per month. So, um, uh, so I wasn't saying that, that anyone that I know of is bringing in a thousand personal enrollments per month. Um, <clears throat> so, um, Tanya is asking about the placement move option when they upgrade, um, that, that could be lost. Um, so what I know is that we didn't have that before 2015 and we did just fine. Um, from what I've heard from Emily Wright, most of the time when people do use that, when they use the upgrade to move a customer to a, a new position as a builder, uh, most of the time, it's only being used to help that leader's rank. It doesn't actually help the person. So I believe that, you know, and I'm not saying that we have a bunch of cheaters and, and manipulators, but, but I truly believe if, if you would just place people where they would grow best the first time, then we wouldn't be thinking, how can I move um, existing volume for my rank um, we, would, we would move our focus to just helping people grow the very best. So I don't believe that <clears throat> um, the, 
the downsides outweigh the, outweigh the gains um, when, we, when we think about placements. Um, so Teresa is saying doTERRA is growing in Europe at high rates, not plateauing. Well, congratulations to you. Um, apparently you guys have um, a lot more figured out than, than we have in America because we've, we've definitely had some plateauing in, in most teams. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so I I'd love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and put in the chat what, what's coming to your mind as you think about the, the simple power of accidental sharing and accidental commissions. What, what are your thoughts? What, what, uh, what ideas or ahas are you having? And you're welcome to unmute yourself if you don't want to type it in. <clears throat> so some of you are saying, how would you explain this to new people? Um, honestly, I, I wouldn't even make it a point of discussion because there are no downsides to being a wellness advocate. Um, the only, the only person that it impacts the most is you, you know, for the reasons that Tanya mentioned, um, it, it does give you one placement move, um, if you bring them in as a customer. So because, um, because it has this, the wellness advocate account has all the same benefits, you know, the same savings, same loyalty rewards, um, so I don't, I don't think that anything I've shared today needs to be explained to customers. Like they don't, they don't need to know um, why the US market has plateaued. It, it really doesn't change anything for them, right? So the, the only thing, <clears throat> I, I assume that most people on this call are builders. And, and so the question most builders have is what can I do to make the biggest difference in my doTERRA business? So, um, so yeah, don't, don't give the customer the, or the potential customer any more information than they need to choose the right kit and understand the, the power of the product, the power of loyalty rewards and get their account set up. <clears throat> um, one thing I've, I've learned more than anything in doTERRA is the confused mind says no. And so, um, when it comes to simplifying the process of, of enrolling someone, the, the oftentimes the less information, the better. Um, we had one builder who made a binder that had every single option available. It had every single enrollment kit. I mean, they found kits that I had never found of. Like one of them was a, a Chinese uh, enrollment kit that you can buy in, in America. And they also had every account type, they had a retail account, they had a professional account, they had um, <clears throat> obviously the, the, the two most popular. <clears throat> Guess how many enrollments they got during Diamond Club, their first month out? Zero. Because they would sit down with this binder and people just, it, it was way, way too much. And, and, and bless their hearts, they, they figured it out really fast. <clears throat> but the point is, um, one of our jobs as marketers is to simplify as much as possible, to, to limit the amount of noise in people's decision-making so that it can be simple for them. So that's what I've found with the top leaders in doTERRA um, is they're not the, um, it's not like they're the most experts in terms of like understanding science or health or, or even business, um, but they have mastered the art of simplicity. So that's what I mean. Um, yeah, don't, don't share any of these stats with a, a new a potential customer because they're, they're just irrelevant. 
what other thoughts are you guys having? What other questions or, um, okay, Patricia's raising your hand. Go ahead and unmute yourself if you wanna come on and. Yeah, I, I just ask you because the writing is not my thing. Um, did I understand it right that you actually mean that we are enrolling Advocates Act now and not customers anymore? That's because right. I think this is a very good thing because I enrolled two years ago only advocates and then somebody in Switzerland told me you shouldn't enroll advocates, you should really enroll the customers, the green one, because of displacements after three months. Mm -hmm. And then my actually my part of the ranking went down. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're telling like that, then I can again enroll the advocates and I just sponsor the people and I don't have to ask the others. That's right. You mean it like that? Yes, that's exactly oh, right. That's so simple. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Isn't it funny how simple the answers that we're looking so hard for can be sometimes? Um, when, when we left doTERRA's corporate offices, I was just shaking my head because it's so, so simple and it, it will make so much difference. Um, so yeah, but like, like I was explaining to Tanya, the, the ability to move, I, I think actually serves as a distraction and, and it can tend to just move our focus off the one thing, right? Uh, Ila, you raised your hand, go ahead and unmute yourself. If you don't mind, I also would uh, talk because writing is also not my <laughs> biggest right. thing. Um, do I understand right that uh, we immediately should also talk to our customers that they should be also advocates? Because if we do that, my concern is that we are not so far away from Young Living who do this practice. And my experience is that a lot of people first would love to start as customers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that, um, I mean, every situation with your current customers is going to be unique. Um, <clears throat> so I would, I would guess that most of the time it's not worth uh, reaching out to your existing customers and saying, hey, you should upgrade to a, a wellness advocate account um, because that could be an awkward conversation. You know, that, that's, um, they're going to be asking lots of questions. Well, why, why did you sign me up as this when I should have been that? You know what I mean? Like, um, I would just say moving forward with new enrollments, I, I would just uh, focus on the wellness advocate account type um, because it's um, because of everything we talked about. So, um, but you did mention Young Living. Um, do they, do they only, or do they focus on the, the builder type account in Young Living? Okay. I didn't yes. know that. I, I uh, you know, we actually live a few houses away from, from uh, Mary Young. And, um, and we're very much in, in touch with all the things that are going down at Young Living. They just fired their whole executive team again. Um, they say that Gary Young is, is leading the company from the grave. Um, so I think Young Living has much bigger issues than, than this one. And, and I definitely wouldn't say that this is the, the cause of, of their company's distress. So I think there's no need to have any concern with building in this way. It's, it's how we built doTERRA for the first, gosh, what was that, eight years? You know, we didn't have the other options. So we just, well, I think there was a preferred customer is what they called it, but it, it didn't really have as many benefits. So hardly anybody used it. I think it was like 3% of the company. Um, okay, so Daisy is saying, the only thing I understand is how they should accidentally enroll someone. So um, <clears throat> what happens, one of the main differences when, um, when people do enroll as a wellness advocate is 
they're, they're assigned a number <clears throat> and, and with that number comes a link. And so that, that link, it's, I mean, it's how many programs, how many companies out there currently offer some kind of affiliate program? So Amazon, which is the biggest player in America, has an affiliate program. So, you know, it's two clicks to sign up. And now I have a link that I, if I send that out, if somebody's buying their personal development books, I get a, you know, one or 2% commission. It's not much, but man, it's, it's crazy how much that uh, changes behavior. And so the same thing is going to happen with, um, with the people that we enroll. Um, it's amazing how many people actually still re read their emails. <laughs> and so they'll, they'll probably get an email and, and um, they will, um, you know, uh, uh, like I said, it's not 100% and it's not 50%. At our peak, it was only 20%. And the difference between 20% and 4% made all the difference in the world. And so that's what, um, that's what we're suggesting is those few people who do convert from users to shares, they don't mind going through the hassle of setting up their back office or going through the hassle of um, helping a neighbor or a friend um, jump through those hoops. That's, and, and that's the crazy thing is, this is not a huge swing of the pendulum changing all of our focus. It's, it's really a very, very small change, <clears throat> but I, I believe it will make the biggest difference. So, um, and I hear you, Patricia, doTERRA's uh, back end is, is not the best. It's, it's not as good as it could be. And it still works. <laughs> It's, it's all we had in, in the US market up until 2015. And so, um, um, yeah, it's, it's really great. Um, Ela, is doTERRA planning on an affiliate program for Europe? I know that they've started um, playing around with some concepts. I think they're gonna be rolling out, well, I don't know how much of this I should share, but at the US leadership next week, um, they're supposed to be rolling out a beta program for an affiliate program. Um, but I think they'll, they're going to want to test that for several months, see if it works. If it works, they'll, they'll roll it out probably U.S. first, and then we'll see about the market. So I, I hate to commit that anything will happen in Europe anytime soon. I, um, right now, it's just kind of a, a new concept they're toying with. And Christiane is asking... Uh, you're saying that we should enroll new customers as a WA without telling or explaining anything. I think it's fine to tell them, hey, what's really cool about this account type is, you know, someday down the road, if you tell your neighbor, then guess what? doTERRA is going to reward you. You know, just like on Amazon, when I share my favorite book, Amazon gives me a little something. The same thing is, is true for you. So I wouldn't hide it. You know, I, I wouldn't... Um, you know, you don't need to be sneaky, um, but it's also like, um, it's not something you need to put a lot of focus and have make it a huge conversation. Um, yeah, amen, Daisy. Um, so again, Daisy, I wouldn't, um, if, if I'm enrolling a new customer, you don't need to share any of these statistics um, that, that we've talked about today. I, I would just put more emphasis on the benefits of, you know, getting compensated if, if you do decide to share someday and then leave it at that. You know, that's all we did in the early days. And in fact, in the early days, I don't think we, I think we hardly even mentioned the, uh, the preferred member account type. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's up to you. Everyone gets to build the business exactly the way they choose. Um, I, I would just mostly focus on the upsides, you know? So I think Eva, you've got a question. No, I just uh, remember I started 2016 mm. and all the 
little, uh, uh, what is it, Lila people, there mm -hmm. were no uh, wholesale customers. Mm -hmm. So we had only these uh, same um, mm -hmm. sign for enrollments. And when doTERRA started with the customer, little green people, Mm -hmm. We were quite confused because it made our business more difficult because mm -hmm. we couldn't place people underneath. Mm -hmm. So it had to do with a change of mind to yeah. accept that. And now you are telling us, as far as I understand, we go back to this. Is right. that correct? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little bit slowly. No, you're great. Um, the there, there is so much power in simplicity. And it's one of the most difficult things in the world is to create absolute simplicity. And, and I believe this is one of those examples where, you know, Dota I, I believe doTERRA um, made a good choice in um, responding to the FDA by making this new account type. And one of the, the byproducts was it just made things a little more complicated. And it just, um, for, for builders doing the business, it just added one extra layer of, you know, something I need, I need to learn, something I need to teach, something I need to remember. And, and so, yeah, it's just, ah, simplicity is, is such a, an elusive, but powerful thing. In our doTERRA in, in any kind of business so yes that's that's the holy grail in uh design usability that's um my background before doTERRA was i was a graphic designer i mostly designed websites and so that's what everything was focused on was how can i make this the best experience for the user and and that's what amazon uh nailed that's what they figured out better than anyone else is is how to make the simplest user experience in buying something online so yeah great point all right any other questions thoughts feedback yes say hi leo I just think that's that's really mind-blowing statistics and um yeah really something to think about and and um I guess with placements it's it'll it'll help to focus on where that person is going to flourish best rather than filling a few gaps temporarily exactly yeah, it really does. Exactly. <laughs> when we choose to put our focus on where will they grow best? I mean, it's again, it's a subtle change, but it changes everything and for the better. Um, because it's less about, you know, how do I game the system to maximize my rank or maximize my commissions? Instead, it's no, this is a human being. And my job is to help them succeed and help them get what they want. And, and so that's really, ah, that should be the name of the game from day one. Totally. That's when we get the biggest growth, no question. It's when you create the most growth for that person. You're choosing them and it just multiplies and grows and flourishes. I'm so glad to join you guys. I got to do a call with Canada today and our time was all excited, exciting, overlapping. So um, I'm so glad that you got to have this conversation and I think it's crucial uh, what Andy has been sharing. So. Anybody have any other questions or? Or thoughts? Anything you want to share? Yeah, 
I have a few things I'd love to share and then you can address that. But I just think that um, recalibration and pivoting based on new data is so essential in our experiencing success. If we get so stuck in a pattern or a way of thinking or a way of being or doing that we can't shift based on what is, then we're living in insanity, right? So um, I love just being open to what is and this new statistic or what's happening in the world and recalibrating or pivoting based on that. I would say it's really important to just keep scanning your team and your member community for unmet needs. What are the unmet needs that you can fill right now? Um, it's, it's kind of like that, I don't know, is that a radar wave, right? Every time it goes around, it finds different things. And so we get to be that on occasion and be just regularly looking back. So one of the things I think is really crucial is to, let me open one of the last tabs, the last couple tabs I had open, um, is to go back to your purpose. Um, go back to what brought you here in the first place. And uh, with the Canadians, we talked about just, and I think we talked about this for a moment last time, but this target your message. Um, because as you are clued in, this is the business building guide. It's on page 25 of the business building guide. And this just takes you back to, okay, I'm remembering, I'm recalibrating. Who am I, what am I seeking? Who am I serving? And what problems am I solving? And it, it changes everything. Once you've clarified your purpose, being aware of those unmet needs. And then you can create focus and attention based on that, based on what you learned today. Um, you're a limitless creator and you can bring in the focus to wherever it needs to be. Um, the Hawaiians that we got to talk to, they, they are really clear on their purpose. So at the beginning of every class, they talk about, hey, I, I am doing doTERRA so that I can create freedom for my family, health freedom, the freedom to buy property here in Hawaii where I was born and raised so that my children can live here. And they start out all their classes with that because that they're identifying their purpose and they're clarifying that for everyone. And so they have like a following. They have people that, that are more engaged because there's a purpose behind it. Um, it's easy in our world today to get a lot of disillusioned people, right? That just throw out everything. So if you can bring your purpose back and be strong enough on that purpose while aligned with how that purpose meets the needs of those you care about, that's where the magic is gonna happen. So create, um, then you just create focus and attention with all of the noise in the background, just hone that in. Um, one of the ways that the, there's a group of, they call themselves Antibaptist. What's Anabaptist. Anabaptist. And what's the um, Mennonite. Mennonite. There's a group in the US that they are just true believers and they live in these communities and they, they kind of separate themselves from a lot of the things that we that might feel um, like normal technology or normal da da da. And um, they have just noticed the needs of the people in their community 
And so when it's farming, when it's harvesting time, they teach a, a little different essential oil class because it helps the people know how to use essential oils um, in the things that they're doing at that time of year with the harvest or in spring with planting. So they're taking um, the magic of what we teach all the time and making it meet the people's needs right there in that moment. So how can you do that right now? How can you do that for your people so that you're meeting better needs and creating more value for them? Um, so think about that and, and then create focus around that. Maybe that's doing an incentive. This Hawaiian group, they created focus around their enrollment and then around their first, second, and third LRPs. You know, they gave away a free toothpaste for whoever enrolled within 24 hours of the class. And that created enough focus that with all the noise outside that it helped the people make a decision and their close rate went up like crazy, right? The, for the first month LRP, they gave um, uh, an app subscription. They reimbursed for an app subscription or they gave them a book, whatever the situation you know, worked better for. Um, and then the second month they did roller bottles and sprayers. They got a little DIY kit that they started to help them use their oils better. And then the third month, they got an oil pouch and that team invested. They put their time, their money, their energy on to help with those most important key behaviors like that first enrollment, first, second, and third LRPs because they knew if they, if they draw a circle around it, if they bring focus to it, um, if they create more value there, that um, that value will flow back to them. And it does every time you create more value by placing people where they are meant to be or by serving bigger and more meaningfully, um, you'll have that value come back to you. Andy, talk, talk to him about taxes. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, if, if you feel like um, you got someone who's um, worried about uh, going up the next tax bracket, or um, if, if you feel like it would be dishonest to, to not tell them that, then, then that's great. Um, most people I know would rather earn more money and pay taxes on it than, than not earn that money. But, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to, to share that. All right, well, I think that's all we have. Tanya, anything? You want yeah. to add any other, questions, any other questions for us? We love you and we are so grateful that you are bringing your purpose and your message to the hearts and minds and bodies of those that need you. It's so important. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Mm -hmm. oh, we're so grateful to have you here. Oh, question. Yeah, will you guys be in Budapest? Oh, yes. Our mm -hmm. plan is to both be there right now. So Same. we are looking to make it happen. How many of you will be in Budapest? Let's see. Oh, good. I love it. I love it. We're so excited to be able to be together. Finally, it's been a long journey, but this is going to be the best European convention ever. And I'm so grateful. We'll appreciate it like never before, right? Oh, well, we're really sure. grateful to have you guys with us and share your knowledge and wisdom and just, yeah, all so inspiring and so helpful. So thank you. Well, we're looking forward to some adventures there, hopefully some more one-on-one -on -one time with each of you and it'll just be great to be together. So feel all of our love, take care of yourselves, right? So you can take care of others so well and bring that energy to them. And uh, we'll see you next month. Tanya, you have your birthday, but we're still going on and we'll be here. Um, and that's April. April the 11th. 
April the 11th, same time. I, I've got a question. Sure. Yes. If you have a few more minutes, I don't want to hold you up. For sure. We're great. Okay. So I'm uh, in Tanya's team and we've met a few times now, um, Gold Leader and Tanya's team. Uh, but I have a few people that literally I want to recognize. Megan Owen hit, doesn't even know this, but she's hit manager. I don't know if she's still on here. Um, is she still here? Oh, no. Go I'm ahead. More. Oh. But um, I, I wanted just to say, because um, there'll be people for different ranks, if you have a story about your early days, like when you were in the trenches, that and like any any little snippet, um, because I love, I know, and not everyone will know some of the road trip when you found Adish and Santoshi in, um, in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like I just, it is, is there any little story from early days that I love the stories, the behind the scenes little snippets of how, the, how it all came about? <laughs> well, behind the scenes is, um, do you remember? that we would do anything and any, everything that we could do to reach people. We didn't know who it was that we were meant to lead, but um, we knew that we were meant to lead them and we were gonna find them and we were determined. And we did crazy things like put up ads for looking for leaders in natural health um, in a newspaper in Australia. We rented spaces to meet with and interview people. You know, we were like, hey, we will, we will pay them a little, little sales um, stipend so we can count this as a job. And then their fast start will be their commissions, you know? And we, we interviewed for that. We rented um, parts in hotels and most of the time it was a bomb. But because we were so committed and we kept doing it, it worked out. So that's some of the stuff that I remember in Australia. Um, here in the US, it was just like one from one class, it was the steadiness of it. Um, I think my second class, there was nobody there. Um, my third class, there was maybe three people there. And I just felt like, can I really make that big of a difference? And little by little, it started adding up. And that's what I still can't believe to this day it's like the butterfly effect, right? Or the power of just reaching out to one person. So I remember when our back office was just us, just one circle, you know, and it doesn't feel like that long ago. Um, and thinking of each of you and like, I'm just so glad that I had the courage to do something more than I was doing in that moment and get out of my comfort zone. Uh, because think of all the answers to prayers that we each have been because we were willing to get out of our comfort zone. Think of all the lives that you've changed because you were willing to get out of your comfort zone. It's always a stretch to share. It's never the comfortable thing. It's never the cozy thing. It's never the easiest thing, but it's always the best thing and it always pays off. Say hi. This is Abby. Abby, are you grateful for doTERRA? Mm -hmm. Why are you grateful for doTERRA? Um, because um, the oils kind of help me get through hard things, um, especially in Mexico because you get sunburnt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So they helped you through sunburn and emotional stuff. And how happy are you? Very. Yeah. So sometimes when I look at my kids and I think about them not having the oils, that gives me the courage to 
to share with somebody else, right? So just keep going in that direction. And, you know, I even think about who do you know that needs to come to convention with you that you don't even know yet, that's not even on your team yet, you know? Can you find three people that it will change their lives forever between now and convention and invite them and bring them and draw them in because their kids deserve what my kids have and what you have and your kids have. And whether they know it now or appreciate it now, they will someday. They appreciate it when they're humble, right? <laughs> and sometimes they forget when they grow up, huh? But they'll remember again. So we love you. Thank you for the incredible work that you do. And all that you are. Ciao. See you next month and then see you in Budapest. Bye. Thanks.